today in a talk i will try to uh, talk little more about the proteinuria and blood pressure so proteinuria is a usually highly neglected point in a, our day to day practice in fact many times people do order for the urine examination and then unfortunately they don't look at the what is the urine examination they don't look at the uh, whether the urine protein is there or not and nowadays we have a much much deeper and better knowledge about the proteinuria but there are so many studies which have been shown like nahan study or survey had shown that proteinuria increases as our age increases and in that particular proteinuria is much more common with the hypertensive patients similarly framingham the heart study also had shown the prevalence of uh, elderly people the proteinuria is much more and it has also shown that once the patient is a hypertensive you try to control the blood pressure probably it helps to reduce the or control the proteinuria also now let me give you little more detail uh evaluation and uh, about the proteinuria normally our urine examination is so very simple majority of time our family physicians or uh, physicians internist cardiologists nephrologists everybody will be asking for that how many of us are seriously looking at the urine report hopefully after the today's my talk at least we will start looking that very seriously now in normal urine protein should be absent so what we called as a normal protein that less than 30 mg less than 30 mg protein in entire 24 hours urine is a normal when the protein increases from 30 to 300 mg in a 24 hours that is called microalbuminuria i am sure that majority of us must be aware of this terminology of microalbuminuria but still i will go into the detail because it's very very important thing to understand that microalbuminuria is a stage is very important to find out and nowadays it's not difficult to uh, order for the microalbuminuria test is relatively simple and why i'm putting little more importance on this stage because this is a reversible stage so as long as as long as patient is having a microalbuminuria stage probably this is a reversible stage and the patient if treated if we find out the etiological uh, factor maybe diabetes maybe blood pressure and we try to control it well probably the stage is reversible probably we can revert back the kidney damage and if we can do that that will be a great help to the patient and the family and the society and the community and the country now society community and country i will definitely uh, address that part little bit later in my talk but we have to understand here important is that microalbuminuria is a very very important thing and less than 300 mg you see that if you can catch the patient at that particular stage then it is a reversible now once the person crosses 300 mg onwards then it is called as overt proteinuria or permanent damage to the kidney has happened and here probably that we have lost that chance of reversible stage but still it is important that to look at the proteinuria still it is important to modify the our uh, drugs still it is important to do something where we can preserve the kidney function where we can preserve the whatever the remaining kidney function and give extra years to the patient about the uh, avoiding the dialysis or transplantation or what we call as a renal replacement treatment so friend this understanding of proteinuria is a very very important and that's why i took here one or two minute extra because that will be the one of the major part of my talk that proteinuria and kidney damage and blood pressure and how we can tackle this in uh, our medication and treatment which can be helpful to patient to see that avoid any organ damage or disease damage and then yes looking at the proteinuria spot urine protein to creatinine ratio is also important we should try to keep it minimum 
if it is increasing it suggests the more damage so i think given little extra time about the understanding about the proteinuria and its important and microbinuria i think this particular last particular slide you will keep it in mind now what came first chicken or egg hypertension or kidney problem it's many times it's very difficult in our clinical practice to find out whether the blood pressure was uh, to start with or whether the kidney damage was uh, to start with to cause the blood pressure so many times it is a vicious cycle but ultimately we should realize that if it is blood pressure is not well controlled the kidney damage will further increase and if kidney damage further increases the everything will be going into the bad shape there will be lots of cardiovascular events can happen and in that kidney failure stroke myocardial infarction and so on can happen now uh, here i will try to give you a little bit understanding about how the hypertension diabetes and cardiovascular disease goes on if you remember i just told you that if the person is in a microalbuminuria stage and if you control the sugar well there are a chances of reversible big uh, uh, elements or there is a chances that you may get the total protein free or kidney may total become a normal now this slide will help you to understand that what i was telling you once the sugar level is high it can lead to the cellular injury it can lead to the mesangial expansion and this cellular uh, cellular injury continue then there will be continuous mesangial expansion and ultimately that will lead to glomerular sclerosis and tubular interstitial fibrosis so once glomerular sclerosis and tubular interstitial fibrosis happens and ultimately that will lead to the inflammation and total loss of the nephron so friends this is the way the pathogenesis happens in a case of if the blood sugar is not well controlled or sugar remains high and that's what i said initially that it is very important that we have to see that find out the etiological factor and if it is a diabetes control the sugar well then you can prevent the chain of reactions when the sugar is high in initial stages there will be a high gfr then gradually the gfr will start reducing and become normal and then gradually the injury becomes more blood pressure may come up and the gfr will reduce and ultimately kidney complications will increase now we must uh, understand that ckd is a almost i can say it's a pandemic now ckd is all over the world almost 10% of the population i will repeat almost 10% of the population is having ckd now this is a very very high number and friends that's why it's very important and that's why we have to think about the ckd in each and every diabetic person each and every hypertensive person and so on if we do that probably we will try to help that person much more we will try to educate that person how to protect his kidney or her kidney so if 10% of the population then you will say we are not seeing that many end stage renal disease or that many patients requiring renal replacement therapy yes you people are absolutely right that we are not seeing that many people why reason is that so many patients of ckd in initial stage they have associated diabetes they have associated blood pressure and once the kidney damage starts then they get cardiovascular mortality and morbidity so high that almost majority of them die i will repeat majority of them die before reaching to end stage renal disease or stage 5 ckd so we have been seeing very few numbers of the patient requiring dialysis or requiring a renal replacement treatment but there are huge number of patients who is having ckd and if they can tackle well then various damages various mortality and morbidity happens due to the cardiovascular problem 
can be reduced and we can give them a extra better quality of life to all those people so it's very very important to understand this ckd to understand this blood pressure and kidney damage and here to understand that proteinuria and hypertension proteinuria and diabetes and hypertension to understand all will be very very important friends even a uh, developed country like america and european countries they are getting extremely pinched to raise the bill or to pay the uh, whatever the expenses happen for the controlling the ckd patient so for them also it is difficult then a developing country how can they afford so role of the family physician role of the internist role of the cardiologist role of the nephrologist is very very important to make everybody understand and give little extra time to our patient in initial stage of the ckd that is a stage 2 and stage 3 guide them properly then probably you can add lot of extra years of the life into that patient and help them a lot so proteinuria as i told you is has extremely important cardiovascular mm -hmm. outcomes if the proteinuria remains high then they increases the cardiovascular um, mortality and morbidity and if proteinuria or patient is having even microalbuminuria and it is not controlled in fact there is one study where they have found in 48000 huge number of people they have followed up 48000 with the microalbuminuria and they found 90% now this is a huge number 90% greater chance of developing the stroke so this is a high number 90% is a not the small number so we must understand that how the proteinuria can change the kidney function and how the proteinuria can lead to the various clinical cardiovascular outcome here uh, i will try to give you little more uh, detail about the various common disease that is the cardiovascular or metabolic syndrome or kidney and there is lot of overlapping between all those so in cardiovascular compartment whether it's hypertension coronary heart disease heart failure and acute coronary syndrome it can lead to the renal problem it can lead to the have associated a metabolic factor like type 2 diabetes hyperlipidemia or obesity and similarly if there is a ckd or a hypokalemia that will affect the cardiovascular outcome so friends this cardio renal metabolic is a huge uh, overlap and we must understand that we must uh, know about that and anyone any patients is having we should aggressively look into the factor etiological which is responsible and try to control that here in this slides i like to show you that uh, how the uh, proteinuria is uh, showing that the outcome of the patient or the cardiovascular survival if the person is having a no microalbuminuria no proteinuria then you can see that is a uh, in the follow of almost 5 years there is hardly any major cardiovascular episodes and if the patient is having a microalbuminuria or high protein uh, in the urine then there are lots of uh, cardiovascular events and which ultimately cost the patient's life so there is a lot of correlation between the um, uh, cardiovascular events and the ckd and uh, this is a uh, so commonly happening that uh, any cardiovascular events can lead to the uh, kidney problem and any kidney problems will increase the cardiovascular events and as i told you that as the serum creatinine increases this is like i'll just give you the simple example if creatinine is 1.2 1.4 1.5 and if it increases to uh, uh, 2 2.5 or 3 or even i will say if the patient progresses from the stage 2 to stage 3 to stage 4 the cardiovascular event doesn't increase by 2% 5% or 
it increases by 20 fold to 50 fold to 100 fold so that much uh, effect of ckd is there on the cardiovascular events and again i will repeat here cardiovascular event means not only the myocardial infarction it could be stroke it could be blindness it could be renal failure or it could be peripheral vascular disease so anywhere the cardiovascular events can happen and it's very very important that uh, we should see that control the proteinuria see that the ckd state doesn't progress is fast then probably we can give better quality of life to our patients again this slides also there are various ways presence of kidney dysfunction affects the cardiovascular system in many ways and uh, one of the most important ways that it uh, affects the intima of the artery it leads to the platelet adhesions it leads to the health of the uh, arteries and uh, once the endothelium is affected the, there will be various cardiovascular presentation happens in the body and ultimately either way if the heart is not doing well then again the perfusion will affect and if perfusion is kidney perfusion will affect and if kidney perfusion is not good serum creatinine or ckd will go high and again this is a vicious cycle which will set in and next slide i will try to make it little more understanding that how cardiovascular disease which will increase the risk it will increase the damage which will increase uh, which will reduce the gfr and ultimately we'll say that patient's kidney failure set in and not only at that one stage it can go in the other way that it increases the heart failure it increases the structural heart failure and this damage and uh, decrease in gfr again by itself can lead to the increase in heart failure at various stages which this slides will tell you yeah so this uh, this will uh, show you that how the uh, cardiovascular disease can reduce is the uh, kidney function by damaging it decreasing gfr and then by also cardiovascular disease can reduce the heart function it can uh, increases the heart failure by stage 1 a to b to c and then damage and stage b or g decrease in gfr and stage c all are interlinked so any of the cardio renal interactions are so much interlinked at any stage stage 1 to stage 5 there will be a link between the cardiovascular outcome and the kidney failure but that outcome increases by many many fold as the kidney disease increases so this is a very very important point we must learn we must keep it in mind that uh, we should see that we should protect the whatever the residual renal function is there and that will be really helpful there are various studies which has been shown us that if we follow up regularly if we control the blood pressure regularly if we control the sugar well if it doesn't allow the proteinuria to increase then preserving the renal residual uh, renal function is possible and by doing that we can give extra benefit extra years which may be 5 to 10 years extra in preserving the residual renal function and that will be great great importance reason i can tell you uh, here like one patient if you prevent the uh, dialysis by 5 to 10 years can you find out how much money you are been uh, helping i am sure that various countries will have a different kind of expenses regarding the dialysis or regarding the transplantation or regarding the various medication and probably the mumbai is the cheapest center for the dialysis i'm not talking about anything else but dialysis compared to the 
even the african countries compared to the maybe uh, rest of the world actually but still in india also each dialysis expenses will be around 20000 rupees per month so it will be around 2 and 1/2 lakh rupees in a year now if you can uh, think about that that you can save that money and you are not saving that money plus you have to add that that person has to come to the hospital or dialysis center thrice a week majority of time somebody is accompanying that person so you have to uh, calculate the that person's time that person's time's value or how much amount of money uh, he has to or that person has to invest or how much amount of time that person has to invest so all those calculations if you put and then if you add 5 to 10 years you are giving them a extra without dialysis i'm sure anybody can judge anybody can find out how much money you are saving so friends it's very very important that we should give a extremely uh, importance in initial stage and not to neglect unfortunately here in initial stage what happens that as dr karnik said there was lots of uh, myths are there in today also in india also and i am sure that must be there in uh, rest of the world or the other countries also that no need to take extra pills there is myths also that uh, take alternative medicine and which is there very much there in the india and i am sure even uh, is there in usa so i am sure it must be everywhere in the world that they take a alternative medicine they take ayurvedic medicine they take homeopathic medicine and so on and they want to reduce the pills by themselves doctor has given one or two medicine they want to reduce so all these myths are there and that's a difficulty for us but then we have to tell them we have to see that the blood pressure is well controlled and if it is not controlled we have to explain them what kind of damage is they will get in and this is the easier way to explain then how much money we can save if we can avoid dialysis for 5 to 10 years so here i am just again repeating that proteinuria is a one of the most important point we must uh, keep it in mind and if proteinuria is well controlled if we uh, control the proteinuria well probably the we can help that a particular patient a lot and this was originally been told by george beckris and uh, later on yes there are lots of studies to help and prove the same now that is by any standard not okay at today's era so as we grown as we realize that by controlling the blood pressure you can definitely control the lots of complications you can avoid lots of uh, end organ damage and so on simply effect of uh, uh, achieving systolic blood pressure and a renal end point which has been shown in this slide that if the blood pressure is uh, not controlled then the patient's renal rin- uh, end point will increases very fast to higher level and if it is a controlled then probably it will not increase for the long time so this is very important for us to know and that also nowadays as dr karnik had already mentioned that previously the pp was gold standard was that uh, 150 systolic at beyond age of 60 but today even 140 is also considered on the higher side and we will stay at the any age of the life it should not be more than 130 and diastolic of 80 so 130 80 should be the gold standard but if the person is having proteinuria if the person is having a stage 2 stage 3 renal failure then bp 120 will be the better to achieve than the uh, 130 so this is will be a things will change as per the uh, patient what kind of problem patient is having and uh, it is a very very important that we must know that controlling the uh, blood pressure and that also initial stage this is another point at which i think uh, 
we all know that about 50 years back more important was given to the diastolic blood pressure and not the systolic but i think today we will give more important to the systolic blood pressure and we should see that the systolic blood pressure should be well controlled